हेलो 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 गुड आफ्टरनून स्टूडेंट्स गुड आफ्टरनून एम आई विजिबल टू ऑल ऑडिबल टू ऑल फ्रॉम वेयर वी आर स्ट्रीमिंग देर वी सम लैक्स सो जस्ट लेट मी नो जस्ट वेरीफाई वेदर वी आर लाइव और नॉट एंड ऑल्सो इफ यू ऑल कैन टाइप इन द चैट बॉक्स सो दैट आई नो दैट द चैट बॉक्स इज ऑल्सो फंक्शनिंग type in the chat box yes i think so we are live now Yes. Can anybody just type something in the chat box so that we know uh, that all of you? Okay, Matt Sobin. Good morning. Yes. Okay. Uh, so welcome all of you to our OBGY quiz and Dr. Preet Sani. Yeah. Good morning, all of you. So I think it's all clear. Audio, video is all clear. I think. And welcome all of you. Uh, just to give you an update, this is part two. Okay, part two of our OBGY quiz, or as I would say MCQs. Those who were present yesterday uh, have heard the first part. If you were not there live, please go and see the part one also. It is on the An Academy YouTube channel. In part one, we discussed many many MCQs in a span of one hour. Some lots of MCQs were discussed, which was just conducted yesterday. And today, right now, we are for the FMG preparation part two. and uh, also request you to see the part 1 video which is there on the an academy uh, need pg channel it's on youtube okay so as right now how you are seeing the second part live on uh, youtube the same part 1 which was conducted yesterday we had uh, many mcq discussion so please see that also okay and welcome to an academy need pg just a couple of information before we begin so it is time that i want all of you to participate on 21st may that is tomorrow 200 questions 19 subjects it is the med scholar test for the need pg 2024 preparation the timing is 10 am to 130 and there is a chance of to getting 100% scholarship and lots of other prizes okay so please enroll uh, on the for tomorrow 21st may all 19 subjects question 10 am in the morning okay it is on the an academy okay and target fmge batch all those who haven't yet started your preparation we would want you to go and join this high yield revision batch and the code is mentor m e n t o r please use this code so that you can get discounts okay all the top educators including me will be there and we will be covering a uh, entire rapid revision for the fmg examination at a very very discounted price of only 5250 you can you get additional 5% off when you apply this code of mentor okay and we have got lots of other batches the next 2023 the next next or need pg as you would like to call it the batch is starting on may 25th and that's also available at all the uh, top educators all 19 educators including me will be there seven months course and again the code is the same mentor to get the discounts okay so the again a highly effective course which will be discussing comprehensively uh, all the subjects okay so more than 200 plus class that's going to give you more than 400 hours of preparation for the upcoming examination okay hundreds of learners have got their uh, clearance through uh, an academy and the last mile fmg batch which we told you is available and the next batch also okay and all of you know the advantages live lectures recorded classes anytime anywhere as per your convenience and question bank is also there and need pg vitals okay vitals is a complete set of studio recorded lectures top quality completely recorded classes which is excellent and you should also see the lectures and i can guarantee you you will pass your fmg if you master this videos is guaranteed okay so with this let us begin like yesterday keep it a interactive session i want all of you to answer right from does not matter we are here to learn we'll be discussing uh, like a quiz we'll be discussing the mcq we'll also not only give you the mcq answer the relevant theory and the 
variation in the MCQ and four or five MCQs with each MCQ gets answered. And these are all the PYQs and highly uh, important also are got images also. So PYQ is also there, image based questions are there. And this is extremely important high yield MCQ. Okay, so let us begin our discussion with the first question and yes. So I have the first question, all of you please answer. Okay, we have got a patient who has come to us with 45 days amenorrhea, pregnant patient and she wants MTP, 45 days amenorrhea, UPT positive. How will you help her with the MTP? Options 1, 2, 3, 4. Yes, anybody? Come on, come on, come on, students, come on. Tell me the answer A, B, C, D. Okay, Ned Sorbin is saying option A, Ned Subin. Okay, yes. Swati SR option A, Nitin Bharti option C, Fayaz option Okay, so now please understand, many of you are getting confused because you are not reading the options correctly. This is of course all are confusing options. Okay, yes, Tiger correct, yes, okay. And uh, Nitin correct, okay. So now please pay attention all of you. The important point to be kept in mind is that it is a first point. Okay, please understand. We are not overall MTP. Can anybody tell me overall MTP is allowed till how many weeks of gestation now? Sir, MTP is now allowed up to 24 weeks. Okay, the upper limit from 20 has been moved to 24. This was done for some special cases. It's a separate discussion, but MTP is allowed till 24 weeks. But this medical method, okay, very good. Uh, very good, Sunrise, Chill, Aman. Uh, very good. But the medical method, what is the medical method? This medical method can be used up to 9 weeks of pregnancy. Up to 9 weeks or 63 days from LMP, this medical method can be used. Okay, is it clear to all of you? Now, what is the important point to be kept in mind? The important point to be kept in mind is it is a combi kit. Have you seen the kit? This can also come as an image based question. There will be one single tablet and there will be four other tablets. So totally it contains five tablets. Now can anybody tell me what is this single tablet? So the single tablet and which do you give? The drugs all of you know. You can look at the question. It is Mifi and Mizo. Okay, all options are Mifi, Mizo, Mifi, Mizo. So the drugs given are Mifipristone and Mizoprostone. Which is given first? Can anybody tell me which drug is given first? So the Mifipristone is given first. Anybody, what is another name for Mifipristone? RU486. Okay, RU486 is another name, but the main name is Mifipristone. What kind of a drug it is? Anybody? What kind of a drug is Mifipristone? So Mifipristone is a anti-progesterogenic drug. Very, very important. As the name suggests, progestation. So progestation, progeste, progesterone is for pregnancy. So when I block the progesterone, anti-progesterone, the corpus luteum gets ruptured. No, but Aman, it's not PGF2 alpha. Okay. PGF-12 is carboprost. Okay, Aman, don't make a mistake. Okay, Mifepristone is an anti-progesterogenic drug. Then the, this is the maximum volume what I have got. Okay, just you can increase your volume also. And we, I think it's very loudly, clearly when I'm just seeing my volume. Then the, this is the maximum volume what I have got. Okay. Yes, I think the volume is very clear. Yeah, uh, yes. So, uh, no, but in my device the volume is coming pretty clear yes okay now is it clear to now is it better for all of you yes i'll just try to yeah okay so it's an anti-progesterogenic drug it's an anti-progesterogenic drug uh, which is going to stop the pregnancy from growing further and it also primes the cervix to the action of the next drug now what is this four tablets so and what is the mifepristone so the mifepristone 
is a single tablet of 200 milligrams all of you is this understood to all of you 200 milligrams don't make a mistake and therefore this option is wrong because mifepristone here is 200 mcg matlab microgram is this understood to all of you and therefore this option becomes wrong and meso is not 800 milligram okay it is ulta so this option is out do i give meso first no meso is never given first meso first and then mifi no it is mifi and meso okay go in alphabetical order m i'll, I'll give you a trick clap if you feel happy m i f f both f comes before s comes afterwards is it clear to all of you so here again meso first is out this option is also wrong why because it says meso first and then mifi after 48 hours sorry that will not help and therefore yes those who said option number c is the correct answer why so you go in alphabetical order mifepristone is first we gave it on day one day one that means when the patient comes to you take a proper consent and then what are these four tablets very good these four tablets yes that's open that's how they'll confuse you in the exam also each tablet is 200 microgram now is this clear to all of you i repeat each tablet of meso and what kind of a drug is mesoprostol so mesoprostol is pge1 pge1 again a famous mcq so we'll see with one question four to five mcqs are being discussed is it clear to all of you i repeat mesoprostol is pge1 tablets pge1 it makes the uterus contract and cervix will dilate and the pregnancy comes out but as you can see it is 200 microgram and there are four tablets one two three four so the total dose becomes 800 micrograms which can be used for vaginally also or orally also it can be used or sublingual also is this understood to all of you and this is given on day three after 48 hours you wait for 48 hours then only because mifi action takes time and after 48 hours on day three we give mesoprostol yes can i get 10 thumbs up too so that i can proceed further so i repeat the entire regimen is mifepristone 200 milligrams and then mesoprostol 800 microgram mcg after 48 hours yes is it crystal clear to all of you hashtag please type, please in the chat box please type clear 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 or crystal clear so that i can proceed further is it understood option number three is option number c is the answer it's always me fee first how will you remember it alphabetical order m i f e me fee comes before and then comes m i s o and this is milligram and this is microgram is it understood to all of you yes 200 is the same okay yeah baby 200 hai. it is 200 ka four tablets okay 800 hai. So 200 into four tablets. Okay, yes. So uh, yes, thank you all of you for understanding. Yes. Okay, so that is a very important MCQ and it can be given till 63 days. So instead of 45 days up to 63, we can give it. Can anybody tell me before I proceed further? Suppose the patient is say 10, 11, 12 weeks, then how do I do MTP? Suppose the patient is 10, 11. So this is up to 63 days. But suppose the patient is bigger pregnancy. 11 weeks 12 weeks then what do i do 10 weeks plus 10 to 11 to 12 weeks then what is the option available yes anybody then what is the option available then the option available is suction evacuation or also called as dilatation evacuation or we can use MBA syringe, manual vacuum aspiration. Uh, very good. Uh, Chetora, Ishan, and vacuum aspirator. Yes, manual vacuum aspiration or suction evacuation or dilatation evacuation. Perfectly correct. Yes. So, moving on to the next question. Again, a very, very important. The commonest cause of primary amenorrhea is what? Very famous MCQ and I'll also tell the new definition. The definition for primary amenorrhea has changed. How many of you know the new definition? Can anybody tell me the new definition of primary amenorrhea? New means a change in the age group.
yes 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 pratik singh option 1 okay anyone else with answer all of you please participate narendra singh option 1 no bha bhavnesh chavan very good okay yes pratik very good okay so point number 1 the commonest cause for primary amino acid so very basic mcq okay is turner syndrome yes but okay it is turner syndrome which is also called as ovarian dysgenesis and another name is also gonadal dysgenesis okay so option number 2 because gonads in female is ovaries so whatever is the name all mean the same thing i repeat whether i call it as gonadal dysgenesis or ovarian dysgenesis or turner syndrome what is the karyotype in turner syndrome anybody very good ishan 45x co so this is the most common cause for primary amenorrhea can anybody in this mcq three separate mcq what is second most common cause and what is the third most common cause if i ask you second most common and if i also ask you third most common cause yes all of you correct a uh, very good nitin uh, salini hemant all correct 45x so very good yes can anybody tell me the second most common cause of primary amenorrhea and the third most common cause of amenorrhea yes sun dried sun dried chill perfectly correct your r m k h rokitansky meyer kushner hauser syndrome also called as mullerian agenesis this becomes the second most common cause of primary amenorrhea and androgen insensitivity syndrome another name is testicular feminization syndrome so all this is discussed in our actual plus classes please see the lecture it's a very very important this becomes our third most common cause of primary amenorrhea so i repeat turner syndrome number 1 rmkh number 2 and complete androgen insensitivity syndrome number 3 is the third most common cause now can anybody tell me two more things both of these have got primary amenorrhea and absent uterus and can anybody tell me how is the karyotype in this patients rmkh and cais what is the karyotype again a very famous mcq both of them have got absent uterus remember students in the whole of obgy club if you feel happy if they give you a combo offer if they give you a combo pack of primary amenorrhea plus absent uterus if this combination is given to you if there is primary amenorrhea also and there is absent uterus you have to think of only these two options okay yes very good ashi this is 46 xx and this is 46 xy so these are all the famous mcqs very good pratik since they are all the famous mcqs for your upcoming examination shortly coming okay and now can anybody tell me what is the definition of primary amenorrhea so primary amenorrhea the old old definition was that 14 years no periods and 16 years no periods absence of menses okay absence of menses okay absence of menses but in absence of secondary sexual characters okay if i'm writing ssc secondary is the short form clear to all of you students ssc secondary sexual characters if secondary sexual characters are absent that means there is no axillary hair pubic hair and the girl reaches 14 years then you say this is primary amenorrhea but if secondary sexual characters are present that means there is 
because thalarki pubarki menarki so secondary sexual characters are present then you can wait till 16 years of age but my dear students 14 and 16 are the old definition can anybody tell me the new definition new definition 100% it is coming in the entrance exam the new definition is we have decreased the age by 1 1 year so this 14 has now become 13 years and this 16 is now considered as 15 years clap if you have learned something new on a saturday afternoon thoko tali okay and appreciation and love in the chat box okay is it clear to all of you so i repeat that 14 and 16 have been changed to 13 and 15 years because the age of men are case dropping down and therefore is the reason but 13 years in absence of secondary sexual characters 15 years in presence of secondary sexual characters so all these are extremely important mcqs for your entrance examination okay and i repeat common is cost turners second most common cause rmkh okay yes now a image based mcq very relatively simple mcq it has come in the neat pg also and likely for the fmg examinations also all of you know this is a histero salpingography it is a test for tubal patency but what is being seen over here bhavesh very good med psycho net all of you excellent okay so please understand this why is it not a normal hsg why this is out because remember students the normal uterine cavity is triangle when i do the hsg the normal uterine cavity is a triangle then you will see the dye entering one side tube the dye enters the another side tube it's a very bouncy wavy tubes and what happens the dye will then spill in the pelvis what is this called as spill of the dye so if the dye spills what does it tell me it tells me that the fallopian tubes are patent fallopian tubes are patent that means fallopian tubes are normal it is of course a test for tubal patency It's a test for tubal patency, but we also come to know regarding the shape of the uterus. Now, can anybody tell me if it is a Asherman syndrome? What will I get? Anybody? So, normal HSG may you get a triangle cavity. You cannot see a triangle. If this was the picture, then it was triangle. Here, the shape is definitely abnormal. We'll discuss that in a minute. We're coming to the answer in a minute. Yes, very good, Doctor S. The HSG in Asherman syndrome is going to because there are multiple intrauterine adhesions. The dye will not enter properly, and we will get multiple filling defects. So, multiple filling defects is suggestive of Asherman syndrome. Excellent, all of you. and yes here we can clearly see all of you sir only the like a banana shaped uterus or only one side of the uterus and the tube and spill is seen the uterus normally should have been a triangle in this case clearly sir only one side or one horn of the uterus is seen yes or no do you agree what i have drawn and one side tube would be seen so this is a uni cornuet uterus very good all of you it is not normal it is not asherman can anybody tell me yes so but a complication would be what in a unicornuate generally there is mal presentations it could be breach transverse lie and is a risk of early delivery so preterm labor is one risk preterm labor also remember mullerian anomalies associated with cervical incompetence so there is a risk of cervical incompetence all these are the complications so cervical incompetence ho sakta hai preterm labor ho sakta hai and also mal presentations mainly breach so mal presentations can also happen okay those are the complications very rarely patient may not even be able to conceive even infertility also may happen but mainly pregnant patient will conceive but she can have preterm labor and cervical incompetence and 
uh, risk of malpresentation that is mainly breach okay bilateral corneal block would be what that sir only this as i told you normally the uterus is seen and the tubes are seen but if only the uterus is seen and the tubes are not seen only and you get this kind of a picture then we can say bilateral corneal blocks or it could also be a spasm so when the tubes are not seen when the tube is not seen and it is a block at the corneal part only then you label this as bilateral corneal blocks okay and since i have taught you unicornuate also yes can anybody now identify this picture now here what do i see so all of you know it is not a unicornuate so nobody tell me this because unicorn i've already shown you here unicorn it would only see one side horn yes now difficult mcq difficult mcq very difficult but all of you should know yes clearly we are seeing two types two horns but it is not it is not didal face is a complete duplication didal face matlab double cervix also would be seen okay so that is not there now how to differentiate between a and b okay now yes lavanya very good okay so now please understand the difference anybody where is the septum the septum is projecting inside the uterine cavity so if this is the uterus if this is the uterus this is going to be the septum is it understood to all of you because septum is going to project within the cavity okay and therefore what is the treatment for septate uterus anybody this is also an important mcq how do i make the diagnosis of septate uterus the confirmatory and what is the management La i told you yesterday laparoscopy will be normal because laparoscopy will only see the outer surface so no point doing laparoscopy laparoscopy will be normal septum is within the cavity i will have to go and do a hysteroscopy yes 3d usg is yes, correct very good 3d usg can tell you but then hysteroscopy and we will cut the septum hysteroscopy septal resection so see with one mcq we are discussing so many mcq so septate uterus confirmatory diagnosis by hysteroscopy and the treatment is also hysteroscopic septal resection or septoplasty but what i wanted to tell you was that sir when the septum is projecting inside the cavity how will the hsg look like sir hsg will also show like this two horns hsg will show us two horns like this okay but then how do i know we have to measure the angle because the septum is within the cavity the two horns the two horns will be very close together and this angle will be what this is a acute angle this is a acute angle why is it not a bi bi corneal is a fusion defect your radiology teacher will also show us in bi corneal there are two separate horns one horn like this one horn like this so what will be the angle between the two horns the two horns are going to be wide apart and the angle will be a obtuse angle so yes it is a very difficult mcq and in the exam paper it is difficult for you to measure the angle but here clearly the angle between the two horns which you see over here is a acute angle and therefore septate uterus is the best answer is this understood i repeat in bi corneal uterus sir one horn will be like this one horn will be like this it will be two widely spaced horn it will be like a obtuse angle so when the angle between the two horns is wide apart you get a obtuse angle can i get 10 thumbs up if you have learned something new and then you can label it as bicornuate because it's a fusion defect because in bicornuate so one horn is like this other horn is like this and therefore automatically the angle is going to be wide septate uterus you can see septum is projecting inside the cavity 
and therefore here the die will not fill the die will not fill and for this you will see and this you will see so clearly the angle is going to be acute yes and confined here you can see with laparoscopy okay laparoscopy will see two separate horns so laparoscopy is useful for diagnosis of biconid uterus hysteroscopy is for septate uterus yes but amit sai koi showed na this is the difference at this you can see the picture now please see the picture okay so you can see on this picture that sir here the one horn is here one horn is here it is definitely hardly 30 40 degrees angle hoga 50 60 degree mainly angle hoga so this is definitely more likely to be a septate uterus rather than a bicornuve is it clear to all of you yes moving on to the next question again a very important clinical base you will get some clinical base questions also in the fmg examination okay it's not that fmg will only be one liners clinical case and for year we are going to discuss two three clinical case also 35 year old lady presents to us with amenorrhea since her delivery so after her delivery she has not yet got her periods only okay so there is amenorrhea and there was some complication for which blood transfusion was given to her after delivery so what could that be complication excellent all of you and there is failure to lactate all important clues given to you what it is so what is this all of you yes can anybody tell me what happened to her during delivery p p h may have happened postpartum hemorrhage when there is severe pph what happens is during pph there could also be yes postpartum postpartum pituitary necrosis postpartum pituitary necrosis which is nothing but shehan's syndrome shehan syndrome is shehan syndrome is nothing but postpartum pituitary necrosis and that is the answer over here okay now couple of more points so what happens if there is postpartum pituitary necrosis students what happens if there is postpartum pituitary necrosis so shehan syndrome is the answer so okay now kalman syndrome is what kalman syndrome is kalman syndrome is kalman syndrome is what because we not only discuss one mcq yeah a beta hemant gujjar the unification surgery is strossman surgery strossman okay the two horns Stross, strossman surgery but i don't think they're going to ask you this unification strossman operation S T R A U S S M N Strassman operation you can do okay very good Lavanya excellent there is going to be there is deficiency of G N R H hormones so they will mainly can have primary amenorrhea and mainly there is going to be anosmia they can have delayed puberty absent puberty and they will have anosmia they will not conceive here the patient is happening following this so because the pituitary why there is failure to lactate anybody. what is another name for failure to lactate and failure to lactate important see the earliest sign they ask you what is the earliest anybody earliest feature of shehan syndrome this earliest feature of shehan syndrome anybody what is the earliest feature of shehan syndrome because anyway after delivery there is going to be amenorrhea so patient will amenorrhea comes in anyway there is going to be amenorrhea and patient will say doctor now 3 months are over 4 months are over 5 months are over i have not yet getting my periods so that you come to know later but usse bhi zara or the earliest so failure to lactate is this clear to all of you remember students failure to lactate also called as what another name 
Can anybody tell me another name? Okay, so failure to lactate. or also called as Ogalectoria. Okay students, is this understood to all of you? Failure to lactate, immediately after delivery patients is Dr. Breast milk is not coming only. Okay, failure to lactate or Ogalectoria is the earliest feature. The reason for all this complication, all of you know, is that the pituitary gland gets fired. So when the pituitary gland gets damaged, Prolactin will go not get, prolactin comes from pituitary gland, prolactin will not get secreted and there is going to be very good Krish, Krish Jaiswal, very good. It is called as a galactoria. So prolactin gland, prolactin secretion gets affected, so there is going to be a galactoria and similarly pituitary gland say FSH, LH will also get affected from the anterior pituitary and therefore there will be no menses because FSH is required for the follicles to grow and LH is required for ovulation and then the patient gets menses but since FSH will not come there will be absence of menses so all pituitary hormones get affected very important MCQ postpartum pituitary necrosis last point before we proceed further what is the definition of premature ovarian failure premature ovarian failure may there will be only absence of menses there's, there will not be failure to lactate premature fa ovarian failure is defined as when there is menopause or ovarian failure under the age of what what the cutoff tell all of you so less than 40 years is this understood to all of you that when the men uh, when the ovaries fail under the age of 40 years it is called as premature ovarian failure okay very good 26 med sandesh shir sagar correct less than 40 years that is called as premature ovarian failure. Moving on to the next question. Okay, again a very important sequence. Don't directly jump to the answer. Read the question for a few minutes before answering. When I do a DNC, what are the steps what we follow? As the name suggests, DNC. So dilatation pehle hoga, curettage baad mein hoga. What is DNC? You dilate the cervix and you cure it. But before that, what do you do? Yes, very good. So point number one is we do a PV examination on the operation table to find out whether the uterus is antiverted or the uterus is retroverted and we come to know also about the size of the uterus whether it's six weeks eight weeks bulky uterus what it is okay remember students even in gynecology the size of the uterus is mentioned or told as per the weeks of pregnancy so six weeks eight weeks ten weeks so determining the size and position of the uterus is to be done for size as well as position of the uterus that is done by per vaginal examination by position you know the uterus is antiverted or retroverted so that definitely has to be done first then i would like to sound what is the sound the sound acts as the dilator the first dilator and sound also tells me whether uh, the uterus antiverted retroverted and sound say you get the utero cervical length ucl so that your dilator is not supposed to put the dilators very much inside dilators to just go beyond the os okay so i would like to do the uterine sound so very good four is coming first one is coming next and then of course i do dilate what is the name of the instrument hega's dilator okay those are hega's dilator so sounding of the uterus is done sound also acts like the first dilator and you come to know about the uterus cervical length and then 
there is the dilatation and last is the curating or curate touch okay so i would go with four then one then two and then three very good option number a is the answer you don't do one two three four you don't do four and then three this is also you don't do four and two okay is this understood to all of you yes very good moving on with the next question for the gill operation for the gill operation is done for which condition anybody for the gill is a surgery for what for the gill is a surgery for prolapse uterus and in a young patient with prolapse this was a surgery done so when is a prolapse uterus but now this surgery is not routinely done okay father gill is very very rare okay so all of you write down very 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 rarely done nowadays very very rarely done why because it has got many many complication but all of you please read the question all except dhyan se question padhenge all are complications except lavanier 2 saumier 2 no 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 can anybody tell me now all of you please pay attention once i tell you what is the main step in the father gill surgery what is the main step or the cardinal step which i do in father gill's operation can anybody tell me that and then you get your answer the answer lies in this shalini number 1 very good first is the answer and why i will tell you what is the main step in sir in the father gill operation the main step nobody it is cervical amputation that means if this is the uterus and this is the cervix we are going to chop off the cervix we are going to cut the cervix and create a new cervix okay new cervix so the main step is cervical in a uh, cervical amputation is the main step and what can happen because of this sir because of this when i cut the cervix either the cervix can become too tight which will cause cervical stenosis okay and then there could be infertility and cervical dystocia what is cervical dystocia so during labor the cervix does not dilate failure to dilate so what is dystocia cervical dystocia means that the uterus is contracting but the cervix does not dilate yes or no failure to dilate cervix will not dilate okay in spite of good contraction that is cervical dystocia or it could lead to infertility or cervical stenosis or cervix can become too loose which is called as what cervical incompetence okay cervical incompetence can also happen because i am chopping of the cervix cervical amputation kar diya cervix can become too loose cervical incompetence and cervical incompetence would lead to what it remember student it always leads to second trimester abortion and that is the answer cervical incompetence will not cause first trimester all of you know first trimester causes are genetic and chromosomal is this understood to all of you so i repeat ke sir father gill operation the main step is cervical amputation yes or no can i get thumbs up and in cervical incompetence but in second trimester yes very good and it would lead to second trimester because cervical incompetence always cervical incompetence will always cause abortion always in the second trimester and never in the first trimester so first trimester abortion causes a completely different 
what are the causes of abortion in the first trimester there could be chromosomal genetic diabetes all that so we we'll discuss in detail but yes there could be cervical dystocia and same thing cervical incompetence can also cause preterm labor and prom premature rupture of women so all these and infertility can also happen and that's why i said that this is a very very rarely done surgery but mcq is being asked to you in this so you should know so just remember ke sir either the cervix can become too tight can cause stenosis or so again cause become too loose incompetence which can cause even preterm labor so preterm labor and second trimester abortion are the two important complications okay yes uh, shalini uh, shubhash you want to ask something yes okay so moving on yes again a very very important osiander sign means what in early pregnancy is again very theoretical sign but they can come in the mcq osiander sign is what out of a b c d so again clap if you feel happy one mcq four another mcq will be discussed with this so osiander sign is that when we do a pv examination in early pregnancy we can feel the uterine artery ka pulsations uterine artery pulsations in the lateral fornix that is the osiander sign osiander sign very good all of you somya shalini can anybody tell me what is that is the so this pulsations is what is pulsations of the uterine artery can anybody tell me what is this bluish vaginal discoloration bluish vaginal discoloration is called as what so it is called as jacumer sign or shadwick sign very good nat subin shadwick okay so it's called jacumer or shadow cervical softening anybody cervical softening is what yes cervix is short soft goodell sign okay so there's no explanation how to make it up goodell sign so again as e o d e l goodell sign and by manual examination of the finger this is the hegar sign hegar sign on by manual examination finger get up the hegar sign okay so goodell sign i repeat pulsing lateral fornix is the osiander sign option 2 shadwick or jacumer option 3 goodell option 4 hegar okay yes moving on to the next question CA 125 levels are increased in which of the following conditions? Select the correct answer by using the code given below. That means A, B, C, D four options there. So in this this kind of questions also would be asked to you. So just be very clear when you answer this kind of questions. Answer options only one and two, two three, one three, one two three. So this is the three conditions. Your options are from here. that subin and chatora insan are saying that in 1 and 2 only in 1 and 2 only that means you're saying only in these two okay anyone else with a different answer so remember students that ca 125 it is not at all that it's a non specific marker why am i saying it is non specific because it could be elevated in many many in hundreds of condition all of you know it is a tumor marker for epithelial ovarian cancer so in epithelial ovarian cancer ca125 is going to be elevated but ca125 is also elevated very good in endometriosis also 
and it could also be some anybody some physiological conditions where ca125 is elevated so ca125 is elevated even during pregnancy and during menses if you have collected the blood sample while the patient is menses okay even during menses ca125 becomes elevated and any infections also so please understand infection inflammation pelvic inflammatory diseases okay by the infection any inflammation okay so remember students that in inflammation also it is a very very non specific and any inflammation of the pelvic organ okay that means it could be elevated in salpingitis peritonitis appendicitis also okay appendicitis peritonitis appendicitis peritonitis salpingitis also your bowel colitis pancreatitis all itis so pid also it is going to be elevated and for the answer is 1 2 and 3 is this understood to all of you no beta we don't do it routinely we do it because the difference is that in cancer it is going to be very very high see up to 35 is considered normal so here kya hoga here it will be elevated like 60 70 80 levels okay but yeah pancreatitis ca19.9 is correct beta but in san but even ca125 is elevated okay and epithelial organ cancer levels are very high it can go up to 800 1000 like that very very high levels and they are mainly used for why do we do it for prognosis that it is not for diagnosis after surgery the levels should keep on going down okay so if it is mainly done in the follow up period okay is it like that's why we routinely do it for all patients of ca125 pre operatively because when i want to make sure how is it going to help you all of you pay attention that i will do the ca125 levels then we will do the surgery for the patient surgery for ovarian cancer and then the ca125 level should keep on coming down 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 if the levels are rising it indicates recurrence is that clear your answer beta sunrise chill gives you then if the levels are rising post surgery you can give idea about the recurrence of the top of the like this okay yes uh moving on uh, to the next question and that is missed abortion very many students have a confusion what is the meaning of missed abortion is not diagnosed if what's the meaning of missed abortion so what's the meaning of missed abortion that is not okay again read the question it is not diagnosed if anybody to look at the relatively simple mcq very good okay so yes there could be vaginal bleeding which is brownish or reddish in color yes because what is missed abortion is that sir in early pregnancy the baby heart beat has stopped fetal cardiac activity is absent so either the fetal pole is there so the baby is there so the heart beat starts and stops or the heart beat does not start only but mainly it starts first and that's very good mamta uh, in sanders that sir is fetal cardiac activity is absent but the pregnancy but the baby is not yet expelled out so the dead fetus okay so we call it as early pregnancy demise early fetal demise so you don't use the word iufd iufd is used when it's in the third trimester 28 weeks 30 weeks baby dies you call it iufd so here it's called early fetal demise but the baby is still retained inside the baby is not that dead fetus is not yet expelled out it is still inside the uterus only it is retained inside okay 
so you need to evacuate so the uterus stops growing so then definitely the uterus is smaller than weeks of gestation because baby stops growing at suppose say six weeks and patient may not come to you for seven eight nine weeks so ten weeks he may come so uterus will be smaller and os is closed yes but usg shows fetal activity no so you are not hai. missed abortion is not diagnosed if ultrasonography shows because if ultrasonography clear cut simple if the option if the ultrasound all of you pay attention if the ultrasonography is showing a fetus with cardiac activity that's a very good sign that's a normal pregnancy isn't it it's normal that is what it should be the baby heartbeat should be present that's a normal condition okay so a b c are features of missed abortion and can anybody tell me what is the treatment what am i supposed to do we are supposed to get this baby out you need to evacuate the uterus that is the treatment or the management again same thing we have got option of medical evacuation or doing a surgery depending so either you can give me meso here also or mesoprostol only and surgical also dilatation evacuation. but remember it is to evacuate the uterus because the baby is dead the fetal connectivity is absent is it clear to all of you yes moving on yes we have time for one more mcq yes again ventus ventus is also called as vacuum so vacuum ke liye indication and prerequisite for vacuum is which of the following which of the following so again you have got four which one would you like to choose so point number one all this instrumental delivery vacuum or forceps we do when sir when there is fetal distress yes or no so when the baby if it's full dilatation and there is fetal distress then i would like to because the question is indications also indication as well as prerequisite so cervix should be fully dilated preferably but vacuum ke liye 7 8 9 cm also but in fetal distress do i apply vacuum yes so non reassuring fetal heart rate non reassuring fetal heart rate is same as fetal distress do you agree with me or not yes heart rate is not reassuring so number 2 should definitely be there okay but for all of you two is in all the option two is here also two is here also uh, two is here also so this is out the option out hai 1 3 4 is out okay yes second thing is if there is delay in the second stage yes or no yes for prolonged second stage if the mother is pushing 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 and still the baby is not coming out so prolonged second stage or in many conditions we'll discuss in our actual class like heart disease i want to cut short second stage okay and i want to cut short the second stage also we can apply the forceps or vacuum and common sense for my vacuum i need to have a vertex presentation head comma if it's face i balls will pop out yes or no agar aap face presentation if i apply vacuum what will happen i balls will pop out similarly not after coming out of the breach i can't apply so it's only so again clap if you feel happy it is v for vacuum v for vertex v v vacuum is only for vertex presentation is this clear to all of you so vacuum can only be applied if it is a vertex so vertex hona chahiye so four should also be there in your answer the answer over here is three is not there three should not be there so one two and four one two and four kis mein hai yes and therefore option b lavanya pooja joshi salini shubhas all of you correct clap okay option b is the right answer one two four 1 2 4 delay second stage non reassuring heart rate and vertex anybody gestational age less than 34 weeks means prematurity and prematurity is a absolute contraindication why prematurity is a contraindication because there is increased risk of intraventricular 
hemorrhage intraventricular hemorrhage is going to increase if the baby is premature and therefore less than 34 weeks that means suppose the patient is 30 32 weeks i will not apply the vacuum is this understood to all of you so one two and four one two four option b is the answer not three three nay anaji three nay anaji yes three nay anaji is this understood to all of you clap if you feel happy okay so that's our time thank you very much all of you for coming in i hope it was a very very useful session lots of new things surely you must have come to know is my guarantee also many more classes are coming on special and youtube also classes will be taken for all of you and if you haven't downloaded an academy app please download an academy app use the code mentor to get your discounts and all thumbs up and really thank you for coming in today do check out the lectures completely recorded on need pg vitals for sure and and uh, please take the subscription if you haven't already taken and join soon so that you get the maximum benefit and don't forget also to give the test tomorrow which is on 21st of may bye bye best of luck yeah pre-term we can give nifedipine as a tocolytic agent okay chatora yes okay nifedipine also acts as a tocolytic agent apart from hypertensive okay so bye bye best of luck Thank you very much for coming in today and I will see you in many many